All right, so we're back here with our Chevrolet Camaro, uh, 1968 Chevrolet Camaro, and we're going to continue modeling. I think I said at the end of the last video we're going to be doing the front here, this front section. And yep, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. But first, uh, I noticed a few mistakes when I was going over this. Yeah, this is definitely not right. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this loop cut. Hold up, is my... This screencast hasn't been on, I think. Is it on now? Yeah, it is. Okay, so uh, sorry about that. So we're going to fix this thing here. So Shift-Alt to select a... Um, in loop cut, and that's the wrong loop cut. Yeah, that's that's it. that's what we want. And C, Shift C to deselect these, because we don't want to move those. And we need to move this a bit. I think yeah, this needs to be on this line right here. So let's just see how that goes. Oh uh, yeah, we should probably move this one here, because the correct line, this is the door line right here, and it continues down that way. So, and yeah, these needs to be moved far up right here, these two. Right about there, it's this one too. Yeah, that that's, that's much better. So does this need to be moved. Right there. Well, yeah, it won't perfectly match up. Not these things don't usually perfectly match up, but I think that will do. Although this definitely needs to be moved a bit further up. I think there's a bit of distortion here because that doesn't seem right. So, how about we move this back a bit? Sorry for moving all of this back and forth. We just need to fix this now so that the rest of the frame of the car will be. Okay, that's in a good position. So these these things right here, these can't be curved in. So let's go up top here and actually, yeah, that one too. G, and then let's move it on the X axis. I want it about there, except for this part. This part. Well, we can actually take care of that later um, properly. So, in fact, what we do want to do now is we want to move all of this forward. So if we check the front view, we have this line that goes down the car. So let's create a, a loop cut right there, and G to move, and we're going to shift that upwards like that. Now that really gives it this angled cheekbone, angled cheekbone look. And so we're going to move these front vertices. Wait, what did I just select? Ah, I selected the wrong ones. We need to move these. Yeah, these need to come forward. So we can extend E to extrude, and G, we're going to move that along in a straight line on this Y axis here. And let's, let's stop right here at this wheel, because the wheel is always a bit tricky. And also, we're going to... Shift Alt to select this loop cut right here, and we're gonna move this onto the this line right here. The good thing about this car, what makes it much easier to model compared to other ones, is because it's got all these boxy parts. It's much less. It's, it's got much less curves. So we want to straighten out this line. So we're gonna press S, and we want to straighten it on the Z. So we want we want it to be flat on the Z. So we're gonna press S Z and then zero. Now that's straightened, and we can angle this a bit, by rotating it, and G to move it, and that's, that's good. It's right along that line. Okay, so, yeah, this part is no doubt going to be a little bit tricky to do. We need to extend, so let's move this, let's move this right to that wheelbase right there. Now if we take a look at these reference images, there's that rim, uh, but there's a rim right there. So there's part part of it it's painted or maybe not in this case or which one was that? In this case part of it is painted and then there's a trim. And I think that's what the one we're modeling. So 
we do need to be careful. It's pretty rounded right there. So we can, yeah, we can be, hmm, how, how to best go about this? I think what the best option is to create a loop cut right at the top of that wheel. And we're going to extend all of these right down there. Okay, so now these two need to come up. This one needs to come down, otherwise it's going to look pretty weird. We can move that one up a bit too. And now you're gonna now you're saying, well there's a triangle there, so we can easily fix that by putting a loop cut here. And this is why you don't want to put too many vertices here in the beginning. When you really do need to use them, uh, when you really do need vertices, if you've already put too many Oh my, what what did I do here? Did I Ooh, oops, I don't I don't wanna actually create a loop cut there, that's a bad idea. Let's move that back. Delete that loop cut and E to extend. And now we've got shape with four sides, four corners, which is always good in Blender. This loop cut is a bit wacky, but we can if if it becomes a problem we can easily fix it. But I don't think this is a problem. This this is fine. So now we continue our loop cut over here. Oh my bring it down about there. Now we're going to create a loop cut here because we need to start bringing stuff downwards. So E to select both of those. Oh no, wait, no, not to select both of those, just to extrude them. And we're going to move this one over there. Probably move this a bit up. And then E to bring that down again and then Perfect. We've got it along that line, and I'm sure this can this can be done in a better fashion. Oh yeah, I see it. I see it now. This would yeah, this would definitely fix the problem. So we're gonna move that back actually. G to move that here, and then E to extrude that down. Then fill in this little shape here, and that solves all of our loop cut problems. Hooray! Yeah, alright, that, yeah, now we need to fix up this part, because this is supposed to curve in, and also that is really weird looking. So that should be in line. And I know this doesn't look like a wheel well for now, right now, but I assure you, once, once it starts coming uh, together a bit more, you will you will notice it. So the curve becomes pretty pronounced around here, but I think it draws it around. We do need to definitely create a loop cut there, otherwise that's gonna look ridiculous. And yeah, we can move this back now. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, that looks way way more circular than it was before. And I think we can, because if we take a look at this, it's that it's the, uh, it extrudes a bit, uh, but it stops here and here. So what we should do is extrude all of these, and then shrink that extruded line into the wheel well. Actually, wait, we probably shouldn't extrude. Wait, I know we're creating a lot. Of loop cuts, but they're all necessary. Wait, wait. Yeah. Sometimes you accidentally create a new. Sometimes you accidentally create a new vertice, and that is not good. So. Wait a minute. Did I? Oh, I haven't deleted the previous thing. Let me. Yeah. Okay. Now it's just one thing. All right, there we go. Sorry, I made a bit of a mistake there. I don't think we need to bring that down any further. I think it's fine the way it is. So deselect that, and then we're gonna bring all of this in. We're gonna extrude it inwards. Let's 
make yeah these ones match. Let's bring these back a bit. Bring these back a bit. Bring that down a bit. Bring that over there a bit. We don't want it. Want it to be a bit more uniform than this. So. And then what we're going to do with this is we're going to push it out a bit. And there, that gives you that, if we go into solid, yeah, that gives you that nice curve. Alright, and now I think we can do this part right here, which is, this is the tricky part that I was dreading a bit, but I think it's no problem now. Yeah, we can just bring that down. Wait, wait a minute. This part, we want that part, not that other part. Yeah, alright. Wait, what is that? My my eyes playing tricks on me. It looks like... Alright, well, it's no, it's no worry anyways. So we're going to bring that down there. And then G. I knew it. Wait. Is that the lower... See, this is why orthographic mode can be sometimes pretty confusing. If you've got vertices beneath, you just... Oh, you got to be careful. you got to make sure that you're choosing the, select, the correct vertices. Because you might not, and that will... That will mess up a bunch if you don't... If it goes unnoticed. Yep, I'd say that's pretty good. Although... Although... Hmm. Yeah, let's, ex let's extrude this entire thing a bit further down. Up till this... This point right here. And it's always good to create loop cuts where there's already there's already an, a, a line there in real life on the car. Always good to create loop cuts in those positions. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is good. We're, but. I am a bit worried about one thing, and I want to just make sure that this won't happen. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just see if this, this is the case. Yeah, it looks like that is the case. So this blueprint, as I've said before, not all blueprints are perfect, and this is the case of that. These don't match up perfectly, and this is where you can take some artistic license. So I think we're gonna go with this. These should be brought in a bit. Or no, these probably should be brought out a bit. Alright, that, that is looking pretty, pretty nice, if I do say so myself. Let's just confirm with the... Alright, yeah, that's a bit flat. I have made this curved when it should not be curved. So, we're going to move this down a bit. Modeling can sometimes be a tricky process, so you got to be patient when you're, when you're doing it. You're going to... You will make a lot of mistakes, and I'm doing this. I'm not looking into a not looking at another monitor and doing this. I'm doing this on the spot. So please forgive any mistakes that I make at some points.
much sharper at that point. Okay, and these should be moved down. Yeah, that looks like it. And now we're gonna do this hood. And for this, you can just extrude it right down there. And because of the boxy nature of this car and how flat how flat the surfaces are, that actually looks pretty accurate. But of course, there's some detailing work to be done. So we're gonna extrude this one too. And let's fill in this. I have to fill that. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so I don't want to go too far over time, so I think we're just going to finish up this bottom part right here, and then I'm going to stop the video there. This definitely curves inwards, so, and it all it curves in almost sequentially. So, yeah, we gotta be a bit careful about how we do this. So, oh, I think it matches up good. It matches up pretty good because, yeah, this. It should be about there. And, okay, we're going to create one loop cut there because this is not that accurate. Alright, and one more thing. It doesn't look like we've got this nailed. It looks like it's a bit wider than I expected. So, we're going to... Oh, yeah, that's way... That's way bigger than I thought it would be. So we're going <laughs> to move that all the way out here. Move this back in. Move that back in. Oh, now that, that, that looks nice. And yeah, these angles may look uh, a bit um, weird for now. But once we add, there's a modifier you can add. It's called the subsurface modifier. Once we add that, it smooths everything, smooths everything out a lot. But basically what it does is it, it uh, splits surfaces into more and more surfaces and it makes it a nice curve. And so this won't look as... It, this is currently called a low poly model. And once we apply the subsurface modifier, it becomes a high poly model. So, yeah, I think I think that's where I'm going to stop it for... Ooh, wait. Alright, yeah, that is where I'm going to stop it for today. We've done this front section. The next one, we're going to do the back section, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, back parts are always very tricky because they've always got these nice curves and stuff, and it, the wind, at least the, at least on this model, the window is well defined. In other ones, you might find it, they have these big black borders around it, and you usually shouldn't put that on a blueprint because that's part of the window, but they put it anyways, so you can, it can get really confusing, but it looks like this model was well drawn in that respect, so... Looking forward to that, and uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.